Alright guys, Touchcry back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And over these last several days, we've seen a lot of discussions about the map set right now here in Call of Duty Black Ops Card War. Seems like Crossroads is gone, Apocalypse coming in for Hardpoint at the very least, but some very interesting questions regarding Search and Destroy. Express Search and Destroy is still very much up in the air whether that is going to be a map, but also in general, smoke grenades, sniper rifles. We've had this conversation since the start of the season, the idea that, okay, when smokes get fixed, they can at least come back into the game to make strats more interesting, and also therefore, Four, given they can be used to block off lanes of sight for sniper rifles, then maybe snipers can come back as well. Why is that not happening? Some pros are definitely demanding it happen, but well, it doesn't seem to have got through quite as of yet. Enjoy to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you were new as always, I'd greatly appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. Let's hop into things then. So quite a while ago now, the 24th of February, Chrome comes out and talks about the fact that the one-way smokes have been fixed in the game. Now it's not perfect, these smokes aren't completely opaque like they are in Counter-Strike, but if you guys are run into these in league players, I'm sure you have. It's very frustrating when someone drops one of these in a hard point, and they're still certainly not going to be used in respawn mode in the professional side, to my understanding. You can still kind of see through them, like there's some weird like one-way type thing where you can see the other guy, but I'm pretty sure they can also see you to the same degree, and no one gets aim assist anymore, so there was effectively two issues with smokes when the game came out. The first one was there was these really obnoxious one-way issues. You drop a smoke on you, and um, you could kind of see through it, and the other guy couldn't, and often there was also some aim assist disparities. The guy looking at you through the smoke while you're just standing in it wouldn't get any aim assist, but sometimes you would get aim assist on them. So they fixed the latter of those two, and now it seems they've tried to, at least to some degree, fix their first issue with the one ways, which is making it relatively opaque. You kind of still can see through it, but I mean, it's definitely not as bad as it was. So smokes, honestly, you seem in a reasonable state right now. I think for search and destroy, they could work out quite well, because really the idea with the smoke, I hate really the idea that smokes, you can just chuck them down. This is how people used to use them in search and destroy a couple of months ago before this fix it's just you would chuck them down and then just run through the smoke and uh, it would just make it very difficult for an assault rifle or anyone to take you out because they got no aim assist and you could basically just sprint through your own smoke in a game like counter-strike for example obviously we're comparing cotton counter-strike two very different games but in that game you don't throw a smoke and try and run through it in general unless you're stupid decay i know if you guys were mentioning that to me in the comment section below last time the smoke criminal of course but the majority of the time you don't necessarily want to be doing that unless you really know what you're doing to run through a smoke and know that maybe they won't be watching it at this time because they don't expect you to make a play like like that. However, with these new smokes, you're kind of getting a similar idea where really it seems like these smokes are going to be used to block off lines of sight. I can certainly see ideas on a map like Checkmate, for example. You chuck a smoke grenade down on maybe one of the left side or the right hand side of the plane, and if you're a defensive team, you've got a difficult time figuring out where these guys are going. Are they hitting right street? Are they hitting left street? I can't get the information, and that's really what you're using the smoke grenades for. Maybe you only allow one or two of them for an offensive team or defensive team or whatever, and um, hopefully people don't just chuck them down inside the B bomb side to make an absolute chaos, which is a, certainly a possibility that might happen and does happen in league play from time to time. So still certainly some interesting questions, but I think a number of people would definitely prefer that the smoke grenades come back. And if smokes come back and allow lines of sight to be blocked off like this, then it can snipers arrive as well. That is a big question mark, and certainly teams like Optic and other squads that are very strong sniper rifle players, the likes of Dashi, for example, are considering, right, where are our smokes, where are our snipers, probably trying to get them back in the game relatively soon so that they can actually take their search and destroy to the next level. We actually liked that map for a little too. We yeah. were like, yo, we're good at Miami. I mean, we're not, not good at Miami. Good. Yeah. <laughs> and then we found out real fast. We're nah, we were good at it yeah. like, when snipers are allowed. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's probably facts. Yeah. And smokes. Yeah. Also facts. Because we can just smoke and run yeah. it bomb, get bombed down post -play. Make different plays. We had a lot of good strats when there were smokes and stuff. Damn. But like, I like it without the smokes. Way less chaotic. You like it? Too bad. We're not playing it. No, he likes S and D in general without smokes. Yeah. Or oh, I thought you meant Miami. No, no, no. yeah. Are you well, supposed to I, check I think on that note, and I know you probably don't want to give away like all of your strats, but do you think teams will kind of figure out how to make the other bomb site work? And it doesn't work unless down? there's smokes. Yeah, there's too many angles. You can't. Yeah. We, we need to move the bomb site, or we need to let smokes back in, just because there's seventeen thousand angles you can be shot from. And all of it, like half of them are on plane and plane stairs and on the ladder, like yeah. the exit yeah. door and stuff. So it's like, what, how, like how, how, how do you get it down? Yeah. And then you run into the same issue. How do you watch it? But there are still some question marks, right? So as Luti's saying right here, I'd love to see smokes return, but I'm not sure they've actually been fully fixed quite as of yet. And then the sniper question as well. However, they're still overpowered, right? So the sniper rifles is really the interesting question. Even if smokes come back, and if smokes come back, I do think that is a step in the right direction. I think the pros would be able to use them to great effect. And we've seen a few times on raid 
raid. I think actually uh, Defrag talks about it right here. I'm pretty sure this was after a map on raids. And effectively, we just saw like two strats be used every single round. Our raid is solid for Search and Destroy. I don't think it's spectacular. I think maps like Standoff and uh, even like a map like Meltdown, for example, from Black Ops 2, maybe played somewhat better than Raid in Search and Destroy, but it's still a very solid map. But unfortunately, with no smokes on the map, you tend to see very similar strats. Either the offensive team will just hit B very quickly, or they will just all go A. That's pretty much all you can do on the map. You can't really throw any fakes because there's no smoke grenades, right? You can't just smoke out A and make the defense kind of concerned about that you're actually hitting A and then actually go B instead for a late round push. You can't really do that because they know all the information because there's no smokes on the map to block any of those lines of sight off. Therefore, you can make a very good case that if smokes came back into Raid Search and Destroy or the other maps in general, you can have a lot more varied strats, right? Because pretty much on offense, all the offensive team would do was either send all their forces pretty much over towards the A side, try and get it down and play the defense from pool house side and have like one guy mid and watching the flank and stuff like this, or they would just all hit out B, try and get their side laundry control on the B side, get the bomb down for there, and then kind of play the, play the post plant situation in that kind of sense. So a lot of the search and destroy maps right now are pretty one dimensional and smokes might change that. But the sniper rifle is an interesting question because there's certainly been talk the fact that, okay, the sniper is so OP in this game, it um, shoots very straight, it doesn't have any flinch right as well as a bit of an issue. I think that's really the main issue that people are concerned about, the fact that you can shoot someone like four times with a Krig or whatever, and then, um, the, you know, their gun doesn't flinch at all, and they can take you down immediately. That is certainly a concern, and with the aim assist also being very strong in this game, snipers are definitely very powerful in the current iteration of the title. However, could you go down a different route and potentially decide to get rid of some of the attachments or something like this? This is what we've talked about these last few days, the idea that, okay, like, wh why are we getting rid of the XM4? What if we just got rid of some of the attachments on the XM4, made it more difficult to use? That might be a way to go in the same way that they're getting rid of the muscle brake, for example, on the AK-74U. That could be a direction to go. That was kind of the way that GAs went back in the day. For example, World War II, the bar, for example, that was taken off. The long barrel was taken off the bar. You couldn't use long barrel on the bar, but uh, the bar stayed as a weapon in the title. So who really knows? Maybe that's an option you can take with the snipers. If all the attachments were gone on the snipers, would they still be that strong, especially with snipers, especially with smokes in the game? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, the Simba Dashi are talking right here. This, um, You guys might remember this actually from 2020. I think this is in Modern Warfare. They traded with the sniper rifles who were pretty entertaining while Dashi was still in the lineup. But this I thought was interesting from way back in December. I remember covering it this at the time. There was some tawny that was going on. The Krim and the Dallas guys were playing in. And uh, Krim supposedly talked to the opposition and said that no attachments were allowed on the sniper so that the rest of his team could dominate. Krim then came out and I believe said like he thought this was the case. Slasher was like, uh, no, I don't know where you got that from. That's not the case. And then it came out that actually maybe that was in discussion that uh, the snipers could be allowed, but just with no attachments on. And with no attachments, the sniper really isn't that good. And with smokes in the game to block off lines of sight, yeah, I, I get that even then with no attachments, the sniper might still be so good in the hands of a pro, but um, it's got to be something that could be considered, right? The idea that, okay, we have no attachments on the snipers, and then with smoke grenades, it might actually be okay to bring them in. So pretty interesting stuff. As Blood says right here, Miami with no snipers and smokes is just horrible. So even Miami, which is, a uh, you know, not the worst search and destroy map in the world, in my opinion, it's still, uh, it's still not where it could be, I suppose, with these things coming into the game. And certainly some players seem to want it to happen. Speaking of search and destroy, I thought this is a very interesting thread that came out between Tupac and uh, Crim6 a couple of days ago here. As he says right here, I appreciate the shout out during the Hardpoints podcast. And so, you know, Crowder's talking about the idea that uh, search and destroy stars are very solid in the game. And guys like Tupac Thuglord, who was um, yeah, an SD analyst for Chicago Huntsman last season, could do some great things for some search and destroy teams. But as, it, you know, as he's saying right here, the idea is that uh, you could actually substitute in a guy, a guy like Tupac into the search and destroy rotation. Right? When you play search, you bring in a search and destroy star. And uh, no teams have really tried this out yet. You can make mid-series substitutions nowadays in the CDL that I'm pretty sure you couldn't before. But as Grimm's talking about, look, I hate the notion that S&D kids are better than pros in Search and Destroy when so much more comes into play at a pro level. Into that being Iliot Minnesota was, you know, he didn't know what to do when a team had studied his film, right? When they looked into what he was doing, when they looked into what he was up to. In S&D tourneys, players are generally just thrown together last minute. No chemistry, no strategies. Most importantly, no counter strategies that anyone was employing against them. Whereas in the pros, certainly people do that. Now, in terms of situational in the late round, your expertise, guys like Tupac and um, other players who are very good in Search and Destroy, and you guys in the Search and Destroy community in these kind of late rounds, you know, 1v2 kind of clutch situations, understanding where people are going to come from as well, is much better, is probably much more knowledgeable in these situations than actually the pros, because there's thousands of more reps into play, right? So it's certainly an interesting idea that someone might substitute in in Search and Destroy to improve your lineup. I think the only time this really happened last season was when Enable got subbed in for map one, and then like he had a poor map one, and they just substituted it mid series for Panda again. I think it was like Joey Dubsey and the Seattle guys made that call and it clearly didn't work out for them regardless. But as
as Quim says, look, each player is individually responsible for keeping a mental handbook on everyone you play against. It's just that, you know, you can adapt and be counter strated Pro SD is 80% preparation of my games, 20% everything else. So in reality, he doesn't really think that SD styles like this coming into lineups are actually going to make a significant impact. But um, there's certainly something to keep your eyes on because I think some teams that maybe are struggling in search and destroy could consider this as an option. Wanted to run through some Lion Man cards as well, given we're on the topic right here of the search and destroy stats, stuff like this. CDL stage one cards right here. So this is LA Thieves for top six. TJ's had a pretty good season so far, especially considering this phenomenal search and destroy performances he's been putting up so far. But top six for the LA Thieves here in stage one. Honestly, these ones are really interesting from LAG. You can see right here, despite Vivid being negative, 0 0.93, 0 0.76 in search, 0 0.96 in control, he's actually dominating in terms of the kills per 10 minutes. This is something I was looking up yesterday when I was looking into the method statistics and how many like engagements per 10 minutes he has. If you look at LAG, the engagements per 10 minutes for Vivid, I'm pretty sure are the highest in the league. He has like 55 engagements per 10 minute, which is just ridiculous. And therefore he's pumping out crazy amounts of damage despite dying a load of times. He's constantly up in your face, putting on amazing pressure onto the map. So this is kind of why he has such a high rating here. Maybe at times that means that that's a like over aggression, means that in game modes like control, you're actually putting your team in a difficult situation, right? Because maybe you're throwing away too many lives by being overly aggressive. But in something like hard points, generally it can be a good thing to be putting that much pressure on the map. But if you've got no one there who's quite at the same pace to support, then maybe your team finds itself in a little bit of a difficult spot. But pretty interesting to see. And these, of course, are the ones from Optic Chicago. Big numbers right here, to be honest, especially given they came fourth of the tournament. Dashi has been clearly spectacular so far this season. 1.14 in hardpoint, 1.21 in surge. I mean, his control stats are just out of this world. When you see the 99, that's when you know the people are putting up absolute digits here right now. So I thought these are pretty cool. Of course, I'll leave the link to. I think they're actually on the breakingpoint.gg website. They're also on Lion Man's uh, personal Twitter page, of course, as they tend to be. Thought this was pretty funny from Kevy Skills as well that he came out with yesterday. Pretty popular meme format, certainly this one as of late. So they were favourites to win the whole tourney, that being up to Gaby back in Advanced Warfare World Championship. Then he, that being Nature, pulled out the HBR. I'm sure a lot of you guys that know this particular reference by now. And I thought this is a pretty crazy 1v4 that uh, Zero had in this, uh, well, in this SD tourney or something, whatever they happen to be playing right here. With interestingly, the FFAR in hand. Some reason the FFAR is getting more use as of late with the X and 4 gone. I mean, who knows whether this could be viable in certain situations. Seems like some people tend to be very good at controlling the recoil. And well, certainly to get effect that Zero uses it right here. Intrigued to hear your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Should snipers, should smokes come back? And if they do, what teams benefit and what teams find themselves in a difficult spot? I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. It really helps out the YouTube because I know you enjoyed this content. A lot of people like you may enjoy this content as well. And I'm growing the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you for watching as always. Take care. And I will see you next time. Can we look here? Can we look here? Yeah, wait. Should be planting A if he's there. That's bomb. That's bomb. Oh! Ah!